circumcision one of the most commonly performed operation first the prepuces is completely retracted and glands and corona clean so as not to leave any smegma behind which can be cause of infection i prefer to do it with a clamp method junction of inner and outer layer of prepuce is picked up with straight artery forceps and lifted up a clamp is put across the skin filling the glans penis and going above it so as not to damage the glans penis and cut is made above the artery forceps clamp is released and bleeders are caught there are three regular bleeders at the base and one is a free male vessel two on dorsolateral side and one in the center on the ventral surface there may be some small vessels whatever bleeding vessels are there are all caught you can see the three clamps put now inner layer of prepuce is then picked up in the artery forceps and a dorsal cut is made till about 2 mm from the corona the excessive inner layer of prepuce is cut parallel to the corona leaving 2 to 3 mm this technique gives a very good circular cut and just the required amount of skin is excised Bleeders are now tied. Target is used for this tying. Then a free nail stitch, which is a U-shaped st stitch, is taken. Normal stitch is taken, lifting up the inner prepuce shell layer so as not to damage the urethra. Care is taken that there is no rotational deformity created in the penis. This thread is held on an artery forceps to steady the penis, and then the frenal vessel is tied. this double ligation of renal vessel is very important that because most of the post operative bleeding from circumcision occurs through this renal vessel hemostasis is checked then the stay stitch is cut you can see a nice circular cut and just the required amount of skin removed Paraffin gauze is then wrapped around for if there is any oozing that is occurring to help the hemostasis. And then a plain gauze is wrapped around tight enough to give a pressure and fixed with sticking plaster. This complete dressing comes out after two hours, and then the wound is left open.
anatomy. Thus, hernia operation at the external ring. I prefer to do all my hernias at any age by Mitchell Banks technique. Draping is done. Keeping the towel corners at base of the penis, umbilicus, and the lateral towels just outside the anterior superior iliac spine. Cord is felt starting from pubic tubercle till it almost dip disappears under the fingers. Incision is taken exactly at that site. If the crease is little higher, incision is made little higher but at that level. Incision is deepened right up to the deep layer of superficial fascia which you can now see as a edge. First retractor is put facing the tubercle. You can see the sac line just underneath which is then picked up. That is the cremester crema muscle which is now held into artery forceps and the medial retractor taken away. This will now be incised. Proximally and distally. Till the sac is seen. is then picked up from medial side as the vas and vessels come from lateral side. The vas and vessels are picked up along with the sac on the finger and then the dissection started. Care being taken not to pick up the vas in the forceps and just do a blunt dissection. If it is difficult to separate, a small cut is made in internal spermatic fascia. The vessels are now separated. You can separate the vessels, picking them up in the forceps, but not the vase. You can see the vase is coming in the picture and it is being separated just by dissection. Again, a small cut is made in the internal spermatic fascia. The vas can be separated without holding it. You can see it's just separated away with close forceps. Now the sac is completely separate, which is cross clamped in an artery forceps. And proximal part incised. Giving a stretch on the vase and the vessels. The tissue between the cord structures and the sac is dissected, taking care again not to damage the vase. You see the vase and the vessels nicely separated and 
no peritoneal fat the neck of the sac and the peritoneum that can be seen just coming out of the external ring transfix sac is twisted and transfixation taken at the neck of the sac using the cat gun you can see the peritoneum that has been pulled out so it is called distilled to the transfixation you can see the sac disappearing completely inside on its own this is suggest that your anatomy is at the right level distal sac is then opened up and left open Being taken that you don't inadvertently cut vas in the vessels. Cord structures are pushed inside. The sticker is pulled from the scrotum to make sure that we do not cause an arteriogenic amniotic duct testes. you can see now the testes is lying free in the scrotum cryostal is then sutured before that he must he must assess is secured suture of cremaster muscle is in progress This is again pulled and made sure that everything is in the right place. Subcutaneous tissue, one stitch is taken and then wound is sutured using subcuticular cap. 
this requires only a centimeter of an incision and there is minimal, minimal dis disturbance of the anatomy as canal is not open. And I have found no complications or increased rate of recurrence even when I do, do it in a 12 year old child. Lot of subcritical stitching is inverted by putting the needle back through the wound. That is a previous scar of undescended testis which was operated upon. You can see it is practically invisible scar. This also was done by using Mitchell Wings technique for herniotomy. And you see the other testis is lying nicely in the scrotum. A simple dressing with one gauze and a strip of sticking plaster is put. Standard technique which most of the people follow is Ferguson technique. Inguinal crease incision is taken and the incision deepened till one reaches the external oblique aponeurosis. this subcutaneous tissue is dissected free from the external oblique and the canal is exposed you can see the bulge of the canal that is the external ring and that is the canal an incision is then made with a knife in the external oblique to open the canal proximal to the external ring the ring being kept intact incision is increased till the cord structures are exposed. Cremaster muscle is then picked up. Cord structures are separated. From the cremester, sac is held from its medial side and bars and the vessel separated. This was a case of a hydrocele, hence the sac is so narrow. Honeyotomy procedure otherwise is more or less similar to the Mitchell Bank technique.
sack is clamped across, cut between the two artery fossas and separated from the cord structure. Till beyond the neck of the sick. Again, care being taken not to hold the vase in the forceps and just tease the tissue between the cord structures and the sac. You can see now the peritoneum being lifted out and narrowing at the level of the sac. Sec is being transfixed. After twisting it, You can see the sap, sap disappearing inside. After opening up the distal sac, cremester is sutured. Now canal is being sutured, you can see the tough aponeurotic tissue through which stitches are being taken. In this procedure one should not open the external ring. Suturing of Cremester properly is very important because it reduces the chances of additions of the cord to the surrounding tissue. Subcutaneous tissue is being sutured. And skin being sutured using subcuticular cat gut subcuticular stitching is now going on for the skin
herniotomy in a female this is much easier than in male as there are no cord structures to be separated again you feel the sac starting from tubercle going proximally and take the inguinal crease incision over the sac sac is then picked up if it is possible to separate them from round ligament it is separated otherwise round ligament is transfixed along with the sac some outer tissue adhesions are separated and sac is freed till one sees the neck of the sac and the peritoneum you can see the change of texture of the tissue peritoneum glistening surface and narrowing at the neck that is a peritoneum there is some bleeding which is taken care of by putting an artery forceps peritoneum neck transfixation is done at the neck using cat gut bleeding was from the tissues outside which was taken care of by putting a stitch across retractor taken out and wound sutured using subcutaneous cat gut or cupexy without opening the canal this procedure i do it routinely for all palpable and ectopic tests
testes and cord structures can be felt and incision is taken above that incision is slightly bigger than a routine herniotomy operation as the testes have to come out through that wound incision is deepened till one reaches the deep layer of superficial fascia and then the retractors are placed in position you can see bulge of the test test is lying just under the incision which is then picked up and this little part of the testicular sac is dissected free from gubernaculum and the surrounding tissues you can see the pull is on the scrotum when the gubernaculum is pulled this means it is a undescended testis if there is no pull on the scrotum or the pull is from the perineum it is an ectopic testis this is the final part of the gubernaculum which usually has a vessel sometimes it doesn't if it has a vessel it is put on an artery fossus and then cut now sac is being dissected free proximally now you see this is the real gubernaculum attachment this is held in a artery forceps cut and ligated proximal dissection of the sac continues sac is picked up opposite the vas and the vessels and without opening the sac the section is done posteriorly as you know that the the cord and sac structures are never inside the sac while doing so sometimes the sac opens up in which event we have to do a dissection bit by bit separating the sac from the vas and the vessels as you know this is what is in progress an artery forceps being placed on top of it again dissection is deepened from behind and further part of the sac is separated similar dissection is in progress separating the sac bit by bit putting an artery forceps and cutting
and this is the remaining part of the sack which is now separated all the artery fossils are then picked up and proximal dissection carried out an assistant gives pull on the cord structures so the dissection becomes easy This section has almost progressed beyond the neck of the sac. You can see the peritoneum being pulled out. Transfixation is done. Sec cut. You can see it disappearing in the peritoneal cavity. Enough length is achieved without any further dissection, and I very strongly feel that any palpable test is a canal should not be open. You saw the external ring, ring which was just demonstrated. That's the external ring. This is is spread out on the abdomen, making sure that there is no twist. Then a track is made going just inside of the deep fascia, and it will straight enter the scrotum. Scrotum is picked up on two aluses at the junction of its upper two thirds and lower one third. Transfer sensation is made there. Proximal edge of the incision is picked up in the forceps, and with this scissors, a space is created distally. After that, the space is created proximally in the darter's pouch. The artery forces is pushed out, and tissues on either side are picked up. In two artery forces, and artery forces pushed through. Another artery forces is then railroaded and twist test is picked up in the thing using the sac and making sure that there is no twist. They are pulled out and again make sure that there is no twist. 
you can see the structures are laying in the same direction you can see that this is lying very comfortably as the track is made using the artery forceps track is very very narrow and this will not be able to go back on its own see the comfortable lie of the chest is this proves that we do not need to open the canal to mobilize the sac the tissues which was taken in two artery forceps is then sutured around the cord structures just to have an additional fixation for the testes it's a very light loop that is made it is never tightened because then it can compress the cord structures but this loop will not allow testes to go back testes are placed in the dartos pouch and wound sutured with subcutaneous catheter upper wound is then sutured again with subcutaneous catheter you can see this is lying very comfortably in the scrotum orchiopexy standard technique by opening the inguinal canal this is palpable testes patient also at pharmacist circumcision is already been done an incision which is nearly 2 inches long is taken in the inguinal crease and deepened till one reaches the inguinal canal that is in my nose and on that's a tissue lying over the external ring which is being cut and now canal is being opened the two edges of the external bigot aponeurosis are held in the artery forceps
the cord structures are picked up. And this cell dissection in progress to separate the gubernacula. You can see this was external uh, ectopic perineal passes and pull is on the perineal tissue when we pull the gubernaculum. That is a gubernaculum and artery process is put across to avoid any bleeding. And the other surrounding tissues are then separate. Now separation of the vas and vessels is in progress. That's a vas. I again tell you that I prefer the dissection without opening the sac. It's easy, faster. You can see the whole sac is now separated completely then somebody gives a stretch and the tissues between the cord and the sac are separated right up to the peritoneum. That is the peritoneum you can see. That's the neck of the sac where the transfixation is being done. Procedure is then again the same as for the technique where we do not open the canal. First, the distal part of the that was pouch is created holding the proximal edge mm -hmm. 
and blunt scissors resection. And then the proximal pouch is created. Again, the track is formed using the artery process. As you can see, if you are in the right plane, it takes hardly a second to form the track. I always prefer an artery process to a finger for creating the track because this is a fairly a narrow track through which soft acid is pulled out under pressure. But once it is pulled out, the track collapses on the cord structures and testes cannot go back without any severe pull and you do not need any fixation. Testes is pulled making sure without any twist. You can see this is not going back on its own. The time is by just a loop. You can see that it is never tightened. This is the space is in the pouch. I never cut off the excess of the sack because I feel that helps forming the adhesions and retaining the testes in the scrotum. Wound is closed with subcriticular cat girth. Now the external oblique is sutured reconstructing the canal. Particular closure is in progress. Torsion of the testes. Any acute inguinal no scrotal swelling with redness is to be taken as torsion of the testes and explode unless proved otherwise. You can see the there is a fullness and redness of the left scrotum. A transient sensation is made in the scrotum which is 
deepened till tunica is reached and test is starts to pout out once the tunica is reached incision and the tunica is made vertical here by the time we explore the patient testes had already derotated itself you can see the edema of the cord then i make a cut in the capsule of the testes and if there is a this was a viable testes otherwise but if it is a blue testes i make a cut in the capsule if there is active bleeding i retain the testes if there is no bleeding at all the testes is removed fixation is done on four sides taking stitch through the capsule of the testes and the tissue side by the side sorry for the picture quality as this was being done by a very junior person suture is 1 2 3 and 4 sutures are taken 1 3 and 4 and this is placed back color doppler facilities if available on the in the hospital itself and at the immediate facility then only it is to be done otherwise it waste time and we lose a lot of prestigious time to salvage the testings whenever there is a torsion opposite testes is also fixed simultaneously and not to be kept for the later date because that testes also can go into torsion in the four stitches this is his place back and both the wounds which are umbilical hernia again a very common condition patient operated usually after the age of 3 years a sub umbilical c shaped incision is taken this incision becomes invisible when umbilicus is formed and the wound heals up incision is deepened till the margin of the aponeurotic ring is seen then the tissues are separated and one goes across 
the sack with gentle blunt dissection and sharp dissection as and when necessary. You can see we are now, now through and through across from behind. Incision is then made on the sack. Sec margins are picked up. The posterior layer of the sec is being cut, and the whole sec is picked up in artery vessels. Superiorly. The sac is now being separated from the surrounding tissues. You can see the peritoneum now coming into the lesion. The dissection is carried all around, all around. Completely separating the sac and the peritoneum from umbilical ring. This is done using both sharp and blunt dissection. You can see now the erosion of the fibrous ring margins. peritoneum is nearly completely separate. Sometimes there may be buttonholes made in the peritoneum but then they can always be sutured. You see completely free peritoneum all around. This is then sutured up like any other peritoneal suturing. Excess sac is cut off Peritoneal suturing is over and last bit of the excess sac is cut off. That is the fibrous ring of the umbilicus. Now it is being separated from the subcutaneous tissue so that it is free and there is no pull on the ring. I always Till today prefer a Mayo's repair and not direct suturing of the ring. This may be done but it should never be done in cases of muscular dystrophies and mycopolysaccharidosis as there is a very high rate of recurrence in such cases with direct suturing. Though I do Mayo's double pressing in all the patients using 40 number needle, ne mm -mm, 40 number linen.
the edges are cut on both sides to get a good overlap now suturing is in progress outside in from the upper side then outside in and inside out in the lower left lower edge followed by inside out on the upper edge this will overlap the upper border on the lower border you can see that same procedure is repeated on the right side because usually you need to take two stitches both the sutures are tied simultaneously margin of the upper side is then sutured to the surface of the lower side umbilicus is recreated by taking one stitch through the center of the umbilical skin you can see a nice umbilicus is formed and this scar will not be visible when child grows up lymph node biopsy this is quite commonly performed procedure for pediatric surgery this is cervical lymph node which is palpable node is palpable palpated and incision taken directly on the lymph node in the langers lines in this case incision is little bigger just to do the demonstration of the procedure the incision is deepen through the platysma using the diaphragm and holding the margins of the skin in ls when the lymph node is located Now the lymph node is picked up and being separated using blunt dissection and coagulating the vessels as the separation goes on. cutting is always done after coagulation and the dissection is done always on the surface by pulling the lymph node out and never in the depths as neck is full of 
important structures and by doing a dissection inside you can damage those structures so all the dissection is done as far as possible outside under vision so that you do not damage the important structures these important structures are fixed and they will never get pulled out Finally, the last part of the pedicle is coagulated. The feeding vessels are usually very fine and you do not need to ligate the pedicle. You can just coagulate. You can see the procedure is over and wood will be sutured straight away directly the skin as we do not know the pathology I prefer an interrupted skin suture rather than subcritical sutures in case of lymph node biopsy and states pyloromyotomy this is one operation which is absolutely a standard operation has never had any modification you can see the visible stomach peristalsis coming from the left and ending on the right side it's beautifully seen this is target sign of the pylorus and this is a string sign of the pylorus on sonography. A small towel is put under the left right hypochondrium to push the retroperitoneum anteriorly. That is the lateral border of the rectus muscle and that's the lower margin of the liver so incision is taken at the lower margin of the liver one inch away from the rectus muscle I always prefer a gridiron incision for all pyloromyotomies as this minimizes the wound complications of wound dehiscence. External oblique being separated. Now a nick is made in the fascia of the internal oblique and then it is separated. And now 
now the transfer cell is being separated. That is the transfer cell is muscle. Peritoneum is picked up. Now it is opened, incision deepened both medially and laterally as much as possible. It's very important that you have enough length of peritoneal incision so that there is no problem in bringing the structures out from the abdomen. Retractors are placed in position and stomach picked up. with a Babcock. Babcock is then advanced more proximally keeping the stomach out. The tumor is picked up and brought out of the abdomen using the gentle techniques tactics the tumor is then held between the thumb and the index finger of the left hand and incision made in the avascular area It is initially separated using an artery forceps to make it deep enough to introduce the pyloric spreader. This is used. First, the section is carried out proximally towards the stomach. It's a straight line, and when the hypertrophy is over, the incision becomes oblique. The dissection is then carried distally towards the duodenum. The minute it becomes oblique, further separation is stopped. If one follows this principle, there is no need to check if there is any tear in the duodenum and your myotomy is complete. I feel that pushing air to check the tear in the duodenum causes a tear in the duodenum. Pylorus is placed back. The oozing is usually due to congestion. If easily visible is coagulated otherwise it is pushed inside and wound closed. Minor bleeding will stop on its own as soon as the congestion disappears. Peritoneum is closed. Now internal oblique is being peritoneum is being closed. Internal oblique being retracted. Transosalis is taken along with the peritoneum.
peritoneal suturing is complete. External oblique is retracted. Internal oblique is sutured using a transverse mattress suture. One or maximum two. Skin is retracted and external oblique closed using continuous switches. Two or three subcutaneous stitches are taken and then the wound will be closed using subcuticular catgut. Grid, in, grid iron incision is a very good incision and there is least chances of wound dehiscence and patient can be sent home safely as soon as he tolerates oral feeds. BCG adenitis is never a single node and I prefer to excise the whole lump as incision will form a sinus which will continue to drain. Patient is posted, placed in position, leads are applied at the back and a small towel is put just below the left shoulder to raise the structures. You can see it has almost formed into an abscess and it's a temptation to just incise it and leave it. It should always be excised because if you just incise this and leave it, this may drain and new nodes will appear just behind that which will liquefy and the sinus will continue for months together. 
a incision is taken which is an elliptical one around the margins of the abscess looking skin incision is deepened between the allis fossas and a plane created as far as possible one should try and avoid rupturing the abscess but if it does rupture it doesn't matter you can see it was too close to the skin and it ruptured there that's the tubercle pus which is coming out that is the abscess cavity which is now being separated from the skin the skin over the abscess cavity is excised along with the bcg adenitis wherever there are bleeders they are caught coagulated and then incision made as you see we go deep more and more lymph nodes come into the view so all small vessels are coagulated because these will all retract and it will not be possible to catch them that is a pectoralis muscle which is coming in the view this abscess wall is being separated from the lower margin of this skin you can see more and more lymph nodes are coming on the surface again i insist that all the dissection should be done on the surface you go on pulling the tissues make them tight and coagulate number 1 all the vessels which are coagulated if cut without coagulation will retract number 2 pulling ensures that you do not damage the axillary artery vein or nerves as the dissection is all done on the surface these are fixed structures and they never get pulled out again small vessels are being cauterized before making a cut now there's one more lymph node which has come into the picture which will now be excised again in the same way coagulating and cutting as you go deep more and more lymph nodes as seen and as far as possible all enlarged lymph nodes should be excised very very small lavans can be left behind you can see it is a huge mass though it looked very small on the surface separate the tissues 
coagulate the tissues and then cut. Making sure all the dissection is on the surface. And cutting is made all very close to the lymph node mass and not away from the lymph node mass. You can see some more lymph nodes are coming into the view which are now being separated. So very tedious dissection going from anterior, posterior, medial, lateral and again and again going in the same direction till you reach the absolute depths which are near the axillary vessels. You can see even the lower lymph nodes are so big and if only incision was made you would have had another lymph node coming up. Axilla has lot of fat and coagulating at each spot is a must. This is the mass which is excised and you can see the pulsations of the axillary artery and the vein lying by the side of it. Whole dissection has been done without damaging any of these structures and now it's just there. There was one more lymph node which was left in the little posterior part which is now being removed. It's fairly an empty axillary cavity. Subcutaneous tissue is pushed inside to reduce the dead space. A corrugated train is always kept.
still using the same catwalk corrugated trellis put and a very firm obstructive dressing done to reduce the dead space excision of branchial sinus or a cyst you can see the site of the cyst this was injected the previous night with methylene blue i prefer it that way because the rest of the methylene blue gets absorbed from the tissue and when you operate only the tract is filled with the incision is an elliptical one with what a uh, uh, transverse ex extensions the edges of the wound are picked up in an alice forceps and inc incision deepened all around through the platysma care being taken not to go do too deep towards the caudal end as you may inadvertently cut the sinus this is the skin around the sinus which is kept along with the sinus it is then picked up with an aldis forceps and incision deepened with the scissors towards the caudal end you can do little more dissection as the track goes cephalad initially there is a lot of tissue which is surrounds it as you go deep you can only see that there is a you can see there is a cyst also though there are here the sinus you can see there is a cyst also attached to that tract you can see the tissues are very faintly stained blue while all the methylene blue is in the tract track is now nicely visible and incision is being deepened the incision goes right up to the tonsillar fossa in bigger children sometimes you may need two incisions one around the track and second one little more proximal those are the great vessels from which it is being separated There are some bleeders which are being co coagulated. The section is deepened. Then a finger will be put through the incision, and then an anesthetist will put. You can see we have almost reached the tonsillar fossa. a finger will be put by the ns surgeon from here and the anesthetist will put a finger from the mouth and confirm that both the fingers are meeting this means the dissection is complete
a small peanut dissection is going on towards the last part of the dissection we have one has to be careful because it can just snap off and come in your hand complete track is now removed A drain is always kept. excision of thyroglossal cyst or a sinus this is a midline defect and it's very important that one must remove the hard bone with it you can see the bulge of the cyst a transverse incision is taken over the cyst and deepen till the prethyroid muscles in the fascia cyst is picked up and it you can see it is going deep to the thyroid hyoid bone incision is made on the peritoneum of the hyoid bone muscles are separated and hyoid bone is cut on either side of the tract and removed along with the tract this is a must otherwise recurrent rate is very very high muscles are now being separated and heart is being cut with the bone cutter same procedure repeated on the right side again the dissection is confirmed by using two fingers
in stenosis in normal replaced ns it could take only number 4 hega dilator with difficulty you can see it the stage stitches are taken to keep the area open and attached to the towel this helps reduce the assistance a wavy plasty is now being done the stem of the y goes inside the mucosa of the y goes on the skin the flap from the fork of the y is raised and dissected free so there is no tension on it the stem of the y is dissected further into the mucosa so that the finger can be put in easily the tip of the v is then put into the proximal end of the stem of the y and made the y is made into v then the lateral switches are taken suturing is completed between the held up sutures you can see now the number 16 hegar dilator goes in very easily meconium at the tip of the meatus and imperforate anus again the meconium at the tip of the meatus this was a intermediate variety of the imperforate anus always prefer a right transverse colostomy that is the lateral border of the rectus muscle and these are the oblique muscle the incision is taken from half of the rectus muscle v at the lateral margin of the rectus and then the incision carried laterally
the V tip is towards the leg and the base is towards the head. Base is very broad so the necrosis does not occur. The V flap is first raised along with its subcutaneous tissue. Then the wound is deepened. That's the lateral border of the rectus muscle and the oblique muscles. Incision is deepened by cutting the muscles. The colon is delivered. Transverse colon is identified by its attachment of the momentum. You can see the meconium filled colon. That's a momentum. The intestines are all pushed inside. The area which is lying just underneath the V is selected and the hole is made in the mesentery, rather mesocolon, between the vertical branches, distal to the arcades. The peritoneum lying just under the tip of the V is picked up into an artery forceps and pulled down Then peritoneum is held all around in the artery fossils to start the peritoneal closure. The first stitch is taken in the center which then passes through the peritoneum of the opposite side which has been pulled out from under the colon. The two stitches taken, one on the either side of the holding artery fossils. The skin bridge colostomy has advantage that it does not sink and it almost acts like defunctioning colostomy. After stitching, the distal artery forceps is removed, but the artery forceps holding the upper peritoneum is kept in C2. Peritoneum is then stitched to the serosa of the colon. is carried all around 
the muscles are not stretched the stitching is done in such a way that colostomy becomes as much flat as possible skin bridge is now picked up the previous artery forces working as a guide the tip of the bridge is picked up from its subcutaneous tissue and pulled through after pulling through the skin the first artery forceps is taken out first the two lateral silk stitches are taken the stitch is taken through the tip colostomy is then opened after first coagulating the surface vessels with a coagulating current and then opened using cutting current the meconium is sucked out the mucosa along with the muscle and serosa is stitched to the skin everting the margins that is maturing the colostomy on the table the corner stitch is very important it's a u stitch skin through and through the colon back through and through the colon and then the skin of the opposite side this helps evert the colon so that the feces that are passed do not sip through the wound into the peritoneum can see the flat colostomy then a 10 number catheter is passed which should pass easily or a tip of the small finger should pass in easily the stoma should not be too tight nor it should be too bulky a catheter is passed in the distal colon and on the table wash is given to empty the distal colon
Vaseline gauze is put followed by gauze paste and the incisions are made on either side lateral and medial of the colostomy the lateral wound is first deepened and a little bit of it goes around the mucocutaneous junction and deepening continued till the peritoneum is reached once the peritoneum is reached then the incision is carried all around the colostomy site at the mucocutaneous junction if at all more towards mucosa than towards skin you can see nice separation coming through that's the peritoneum which has been opened thermi reduces the bleeding even then few vessels always escape which are coagulated using coagulation current for intraperitoneal closure the center of the colostomy separation is reached last because all my colostomies are skin bridge colostomies and this spur needs to be taken out at the time of closure of the colostomy few mental additions which are now going to be separated the open end of the colostomy is soaked with betadine which is then pushed inside the lumen
the two stay stitches using the silk are taken in the center of the siroza the edges are then freshened taking care of any bleeding that occurs edges are usually everted in case of colostomy while doing the freshening care is taken so that the margins are totally free and they can be inverted easily interrupted simple inverting stitch with the knots inside the mucosa are taken using absorbable suture procedure is then started from the opposite side you can see the margins were everted before starting so they are not now being dissected so they are free and can be inverted this suturing is carried on till almost the center and the center is closed using that is a center using two cornel stitches session holds the mucosa and inverts it the second layer is zero muscular which is done using black silk so all these anastomoses vicryl or dexon can be used but i have been very happy with the way it is being done and it turns out to be very economical you can see the complete suture line
the stays which is a cut mesentery is closed and colon pushed inside peritoneum is picked up usually there are some additions with the liver which are separated so that peritoneum is totally free and there is no tension when we close the abdomen the peritoneum is separated from the sub muscles are separated from the subcutaneous tissue undermining of the edges done with sharp and blunt dissection and diathermy dissection Again, hemostasis is taken care of. A single layer muscle and peritoneal suturing is done. not put any intraperitoneal drain can see it is coming out very easily i usually like to interrupt it in between at least twice the muscle layer is complete absolutely tension free the skin edges are now freshened and interrupted mattress suturing is done keeping a subcutaneous corrugated rubber drain this helps avoid subcutaneous wound infection closure of pelvic colostomy steps are more or less the same but it is little more difficult as compared to transverse colostomy
incision is deepened till the peritoneum is reached and carried around. Incision is carried all around. You can see almost whole of the colostomy is totally free and let's see peritoneum. Edges are freshened. Hemostasis is taken care of. That is the center of the colostomy where the stay stitches will be taken on the C rosa and the closure turn. Inside the 30 chromic cat guard, simple interrupted inverting suture is taken. Same as in transverse colostomy. complete except for the two central canal stitches Corneal stitch. Second layer is done with zero muscular silk stitches. After which the colostomy wound is closed in layers. complete 